things that truly is is remarkable in Israel is how so many things, and you touched on a couple of them, that you would expect to play as disadvantages have in some strange way turned out to Israel's advantage. And, and the honest truth is, if we admit it, is much more by luck or by fate than by design. Things that you simply wouldn't have thought that would work to our, to our benefit. I was re sitting recently with the head, head of Israel's space program, and he was talking about Israel's satellite project. And he says, you know, we have a problem with our satellite project because every country in the world launches its satellites in the direction of the Earth's rotation because that gives you the additional velocity. Only Israel cannot do that because that would mean that we were firing satellites straight over Arab countries where they would be shot down. So many years ago when we were thinking about this, we realized that we had to actually launch them against the Earth's rotation over the sea. And that meant we had no choice other than trying to develop very, very small micro light satellites. Nobody realized at the time that there would suddenly be such international commercial interest in microsatellites. But when that happened, we were ahead of the curve. And so again, in a strange way, a lot of the things that you were pointing out, like you talk about the arms industry, the fact that we have to send our kids into the, to the military, which you would normally imagine, that not sending them to universities um, in those crucial years would be a, a tremendous price to pay. But it turns out that you probably could not develop a better boot camp or a knowledge-based tech, innovation-based economy than actually sending kids into an environment where they have to learn to network, to innovate, to take responsibility. The fact that we had a million Russian immigrants, you know, and the fact is Israel looks at countries where they see immigration as being a drain on the economy, and it's hard for us to understand, because for us it has been a total blessing. Having this large number of of very talented Russians come to the economy to take up engineering, innovation posts, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> the fact that we didn't have any natural resources to speak of, and the fact that Israel has recently discovered gas and possibly some oil, is a double blessing for Israel. It's a blessing that we found it, but more than that, it's a blessing that we didn't find it earlier. Because if we had found it 20, 30, 40 <coughs> years ago, then it could very easily have lured us into a sense that we could reply, we rely on fossil fuels and natural resources. And this sense that we have no choice but to try and develop intellectual creative resources. Like the fact that we have no domestic market to speak <coughs> of. You know, the fact is, one of the reasons why Israeli startups are inherently international is you cannot make it if you only think in a national sense. You know, you actually have to start off with the possibilities of being a, you know, an international, international development, so on and so forth. The fact is, for decades, Israel's security thinking was predicated, its defense strategy was predicated on three principles. And uh, in Hebrew they sound better than they sound in English. They were Hauta'a, Hatra'a, and Hachra'a which translates to deterrence, early warning, and decisive victory. If we are going to be able to survive in this hostile environment, we have to send the message that we're not to be messed with. We have to have early warning of any attacks. And if there is an attack, we have to have a decisive victory that will be absolutely clear that our stability is ensured. This is a situation in which we find ourselves today actually raises fundamental questions in relation to each of those three principles. First of all, in relation to deterrence, it's one thing to deter a neighboring state that has a line of authority and an established army. But when you are talking about rogue terrorism, terrorist organizations, when you are talking about lone wolf attacks, when you are talking about proxy organizations that are actually doing the will of states that are much further afield, deterrence is a far, far more complicated thing than it is when you're dealing with actually tit for tat with your neighbor. 